um, probably we should go on with our last but not least <laughs> speaker, uh, Dr. Luca Giorgini from Italy. Um, Dr. Luca just passed me a very interesting book on a death instinct and knowledge. Yeah, and he's going to talk uh, about uh, an interesting topic uh, that is on group psychotherapy based on human birth theory. So go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. A lot, but thank you to everybody and uh, good afternoon. I want to thank you uh, a lot of people. First of all, uh, Dr. Cesare Alfonso, who invited me here. Then uh, Azli Zaghir, and whole Malaysian group for their kindness. And uh, finally, uh, Constantin Della and whole France from the Philippines uh, for uh, their sympathy. And, uh, all, uh, and also my co-author of uh, this uh, paper. Who I am? Uh, I am a psychiatrist, a psychotherapist, and development uh, psychologist. I work with uh, group and individual uh, psychotherapy in a public and uh, private uh, context, and also as a volunteer with uh, uh, refugees, victims of torture. Okay. So, I belong to a group of more than 200 psychotherapists who work based on human birth therapy theory. Uh, human birth theory, which was developed by Massimo Fagioli, an Italian psychiatrist, more than 15 years ago. This group has a reference journal, Il Sogno della Farfalla, an official published house, L'Asilo d'Oro, and a school of psychotherapy, Biopsiche, recently approved by the Italian Ministry of Education, Universities and Research. L'Asilo d'Oro, which has published all Fagioli's book, has recently published the English translation of his first book about human birth theory. Yes the colleague remember before, that instinct and knowledge, thus making the theory available to the international public. Since 1975, for 41 years, Professor Fagioli was the psychiatrist of collective analysis, a large group of psychotherapeutic practice and a therapeutic training that combined with research which many psychotherapists, including myself, attended. From this work, there emerged the relevance of, and the potential of a group psychotherapy, the underlying features of, for those psychotherapists who want to practice based on our theory and training. On the one hand, group psychotherapy can better respond to the natural society of human beings than traditional individual psychotherapy. On the other hand, before an increasing and widespread demand for psychotherapy, many more people can be treated and more effectively. Also, it allows to treat lower socioeconomic groups and that end can be implemented in countries with less economic resources. In our approach, psychotherapy is based on three essential features, setting, transference, and interpretation, which, however, have a very different meaning from the classic psychoanalysis. Human birth theory asserts the existence of a physiology of human thinking that emerges at birth as a reaction of the cerebral mother to life. 
This reaction takes the form of a fantasy, which is defined as disappearance fantasy, which makes the external world that the newborn perceives as aggressive disappear. At birth, with the stimulus of light, an absolutely new element, the newborn reacts, making the external world non-existent and creates the mental image of being in the maternal womb, the previous situation of complete homeostasis. This image, or better, the cap this capability to imagine, is the first thinking activity. Therefore, human birth theory recognizes as early at birth the child's capability to think through undefined images. This allows the child to relate to and to know about the external reality with their own subjectivity. In other words, as early as birth, human beings are endowed with an healthy mental reality that needs satisfying the relationship with other person in order to develop physiologically. However, this original physiological condition can be lost, thus leading to the onset of a illness at the latter stage, if during development children are exposed to a violent and disappointing relationship. Even when their physical needs are satisfied, eating, drinking, warmth, etc., their natural desire for love and interest from their caregivers may not be fulfilled. Thus, children may react with the annulment pulsion, a non-conscious dynamic where the other human being and the relevant relationship are made to disappear, become, become non-existent in their mind as if they had never existed. The child will no longer feel the anxiety deriving from disappointment and, at the same time, will partially lose their capability to feel affectivity. For psychotherapy to actually heal an illness, it must recreate the original healthy state in which all of us enter the world. This can be done by proposing to the patient a valid and non-disappointing relationship, where the understanding of non-conscious thinking and of the image of dreams is sought for. The patient will thus be able to comprehend that their being ill is a symptom of a disease, rather than an existential condition inherent to human nature. A disease linked to the loss of a previously healthy mental state. Therefore, the psychotherapist will have to highlight every time how the annulment pulsion changes the patient's ability to relate to the others. <clears throat> so in other words, the psychotherapist will not passively accept that the patient relates to them as if they were a different person, the father, the mother, etc. But will interpret the annulment of the therapist's reality. The patients will be able to increasingly achieve their own relationship with the reality, not only on the basis of consciousness and behavior, but also on affections and emotions. Thus, the fundamental element of a psychotherapy is the patient-physician relationship and its quality. This relationship takes place within well-defined spatial and time boundaries of the psychotherapy session, being stable and constant. Fagioli's first book, That Instinct and Knowledge, actually begins 
with the observation of how, during the summer holidays, the patient can react to the analyst's physical absence with the annulment partial, thus making the analyst and the session unconsciously disappear. The presence of more than one person in the group frustrates the omnipotence of the single one, who will not be able to annul the session that is being held, even if some patients are missing. Overall, it became more difficult for patients to put a control mechanism into effect, that is, to impede the progress of the therapy. The whole work became more complex. For example, each patient will choose where to sit and thus the right distance from the therapist. Patients will have to deal with the communication from others within which issues and dynamics that, concern, that also concern them may emerge, but which they may have avoided an unconscious level. The group provides a more varied number of ideas. Each patient will have to develop a relationship with the more complex reality of the therapist, because they will have also to deal with the therapist's interaction with and reaction to communication coming from the others. Communication is mainly, but not only, centered of the interpretation of dreams. Patients usually perceive that the dreams can also be of interest of the others, as being a thought and not an event, they have a general character. Through interpretation, the therapist reveals pathological dynamics. To do this, the therapist does not use a preconceived knowledge, but their own fantasy placing themselves in affective relationship with the patient. Thus, the therapist shows that the rapport with non-conscious thinking is possible. Even the first effect of a psychotherapy is actually the reappearance of dreams they didn't remember before. Within the group, each patient is stimulated to realize that what is therapeutic is not so much speaking as it is learning how to listen. The interpretation that is given to a single patient is used by the whole group, as every patient may partially or entirely recognize themselves in it. The group is not the sum of single individuals. Instead, it has its own identity, in that, rather than flattening, each individual identity is enhanced in one's personal way of relating to the therapist and the group. The outcome is an image of the therapist and of the group itself that is more varied and free. Thank you. Because I saw that you use interpretation in, and the unconscious and interpretation of dreams. Yes, but it's not a psychoanalysis. It's a, a different theory. Uh, there are so many different psychoanalysis. Transference, uh, setting, interpretation are words that are used also in the psychoanalysis, but uh, they we use it with a different meaning. 
I try to uh, short time to say, for example, that uh, we can't accept that the, the patient treat us as we uh, are a different person. Uh, and so transference is not, uh, the, the therapist is not passively, passively. The therapist have uh, to be active. He have to recognize what is uh, that the patient is doing in that moment. And if the patient is not in a relationship with you, it's not right. And uh, you have to frustrate this. Uh, you have to frustrate this uh, situation because. Uh, uh, we are talking about uh, to understand which is the real unconscious uh, relationship between the patient and the uh, physician. How many patients do you usually do? It depends on, uh, for example, in, in my uh, in my group I have uh, 15 patients. And you did interpretation for the, uh, one patient in order to be heard by others? Yes, I, uh, I call and in, uh, in what is happening in that situation, in that day, there is no pre-order uh, order of uh, interventions and, uh, and uh, I interpret what is normally interpreted dreams uh, because we think that dreams is a way of thinking and uh, that is a sort of language, a language of images. And so uh, it's common and uh, uh, it's universal for all people and uh, all countries. Because uh, if uh, there are different in a physician uh, features, uh, the way as we uh, thought when we are asleep, it's the same. Also, if it's clearly influenced but, uh, but by cultural difference, but uh, what is clear is that uh, one oh, no the the first. Uh, at the most important features of human beings is uh, this non-conscious uh, thinking, this non-conscious thought. That I think, we think, that is uh, what is different between us and animals. Normally you say that uh, uh, animals have, uh, are, um, have only unconscious. I think that animals don't, don't have unconscious. They are really <laughs> rational because they do all to have the the best uh, solution. Okay. But they don't play guitar. Right. <laughs> I imagine it's not a it's not an easy job. <laughs> okay. But uh, thank you, Eli, for introducing both uh, theory uh, based psychotherapy, Dr. Luca. So, in the interest of time, is uh, after three thirty now. Uh, um, we have to conclude the session on behalf of Malaysian Psychiatry Association and also Psychotherapy Section of World uh, Psychiatry Association. I would like to thank uh, all the speakers, uh, Dr. Haifa, Dr. Sylvia and Dr. Luca for sharing your important work in psychotherapy. Uh, and uh, for those who have any questions to all the speakers, you can go ahead and catch up with them during uh, tea. And... Uh, yeah, so probably uh, you should join me in giving uh, a round of applause for all the speakers. Uh, thank you, everybody.